This is the Eric John Phelps Show on 24-7 World Radio. And now, Eric John Phelps. bless the rain and may all the grass begin to grow and the plants begin to come back because this winter burned many, many bushes, uh, trees, and everything is so brown because of the freezing cold. And it's our prayer that God would use this rain to bring back the life to our plants, our grass, and our beautiful sovereign state of Pennsylvania. Glory to God and hallelujah. Welcome to the broadcast today. To men, brethren, what shall we do? This broadcast the Ministry of Reformation Bible Puritan Baptist Church, by the way, which is on April 30th today, Wednesday, April 30th, 2014, of which I am the elder bishop by office and pastor teacher by gift. This broadcast for the spiritual and temporal benefit of my people, the minority Caucasian races of the world, including the Angles, Saxons, Celts, Slavs. That includes you Ukrainians and you Russians. And shame on you for fighting and killing each other. It's just what the Pope wants you to do. Teutons, and by the way, especially you Orthodox Ukrainians and Orthodox Russians, the Jesuits just love seeing Orthodox peoples kill each other. Slavs, Teutons, Franks, Normans, Scotch Irish, and every other branch of the white Caucasian race. Concerning spiritual matters, this broadcast for the edification of white men and preaching the gospel to unsaved white men that they too may obtain salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ, the risen Son of God, God manifest in the flesh, King of the Hebrew Jewish Israelites, and the great God and Savior of the church, that is the body of Christ, to the exclusion of Satan's Jesuit-ruled, religio-political, papal Roman Catholic institution, seated in Rome, that great city and great whore which rules over the kings of the earth, especially Barry Davis Obama and Joe Biden. Spiritually, this broadcast is also for the growth and maturity of white men in Christ, that we may continue to work out our salvation in fear and trembling, knowing that it is our holy God, the Father of the risen Lord Jesus Christ, with whom we have to do. Concerning temporal, political, cultural matters, this broadcast is also for the preservation of the racially white, Anglo-Saxon, Celtic, Slavic, Protestant, and Baptist peoples, historically used by God to break the power of the Pope's murderous and warring dark ages, that bloody disgrace to the history of man having spanned a thousand years from AD 606 to 1648. We shall be reminded that Caucasian, Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, and Baptist Calvinists began the Protestant Reformation, which birthed the modern era in 1648, with the Peace Treaty of Westphalia ending the Black Pope's Thirty Years' War, waged from 1618 to 1648. You say, Luther wasn't a Calvinist. Anybody that believes in total depravity is Calvinistic. And Luther wrote his glorious, The Bondage of the Will. Luther was Calvinistic, no doubt. Luther was biblical as far as the nature of man's concerned. Therefore, a defense will be made for the preservation of the minority white Caucasian Orthodox Christian, Protestant Christian, and Baptist Christian peoples against our plotted racial, linguistic, cultural, historical, and national destruction by Rome, implemented by her Anglo-American international white power structure. You know what? I think I might change that. Implemented by her Anglo-American, German-Saxon international white power structure. I think I'm going to bring that in there too now. Because after all, don't Germans run Great Britain? I mean, isn't the, isn't the monarchy of Great Britain German? And don't we have Germans in this country running things like George Bush? It's the way white Anglo-Saxon international white power structure aided and abetted, well, uh, international Anglo-American, international, white Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, right Anglo-Saxon power structure that's doing it. So I got to include the, the the apostate Germans in this too. So we have Germans, these Saxons, we have Englishmen and Americans, running this international white power structure for the benefit of the Pope of Rome, using the mass murdering Antichrist, anti-Reformation Bible religions of Sunni Islam. That's right. All you Sunni Muslims, 
the leaders of you Sunni Muslims are busy kissing the slippered toe of the Pope. There's not one Salah Adin in the middle of them all. There's not one Suleiman the Magnificent, not one. All the Muslim leaders are just as much pimps and whores as the Protestant leaders and the Orthodox leaders and the Jewish leaders and the Buddhist leaders, the Dalai Lama kissing the toe of the Pope and the Hindu leaders, all of them united together, the religious leaders, to serve the Pope of Rome. And therefore, why is it surprising that the governments then go to serve the Pope of Rome if the religious leaders are doing it? Because as go the church, as go the religion of the country, so goes the country. Indeed, they are set about to use Sunni Islam, socialist communism, socialist fascism, its leaders secretly working together as directed by high-level Freemasons loyal to the Pope of Rome. Fascism is the work of the Jesuits. It's called ultramontaneism before it was called fascism. All validated and blessed by the Pope of Rome in his wicked syllabus of errors of 1864 when he condemned freedom of conscience, freedom of speech, modern progress of all nations. Oh, no, we can't have any of that. We have to be right-wing fascists because right-wing ultramontanism also addresses the Jewish problem. Also addresses the Jewish question. It puts forth the final solution to the Jewish question. And they were talking about that back in the late 1800s. So they use socialist fascism. Its leaders secretly working together as directed by high-level Freemasons loyal to the Pope of Rome. You realize Hayamar Schock? The big banker in Germany that, through his banking finesse, uh, built the German war machine, financed the Reich. Do you realize he was a 33rd degree Freemason? Do you realize Hayamar Schock was not tried at Nuremberg? They let the sinner go. Just like they let Franz von Papen, the high knight of Malta and the vice chancellor of Hitler, they let him go at Nuremberg. They didn't try and convict the sinner of murder of facilitating conspiracy against the German people and put him to death. They let Franz von Papen and Heimar Schock go. And by the way, the middle name of Heimar Schock was Horace Greeley. Horace Greeley, that wicked sinner behind the communist American civil war on the part of the North. Because good old Horace Greeley's overseas correspondence was Karl Marx. <laughs> Karl Marx, the correspondent for the New York Tribune owned by Horace Greeley. And according to Alexander Stevens in his great work, A Constitutional View of the War Between the States, he said, Horace Greeley was the man behind the throne greater than the throne itself when it came to the Lincoln administration. Remember, Lincoln did good and he did evil, just like King James. Continuing on. As well as the Papal Caesar's international white power structure, imposing antichrist and biblical socialist communist policies resulting in forced amalgamation, subsequent racial miscegenation, resulting in irreversible hybridization, pro-black anti-white government discrimination, massive black-on-white crime and international genocide via cleverly incited and orchestrated world wars. Further, a defense will be made for the preservation of the high and lofty yet simple white language of English, used by God to evangelize all the nations of the earth with English-speaking peoples, especially the British, Canadian, and American Caucasian peoples. I just listened to the news here about that man named Sterling. He owns a basketball team called the Clippers. And he made that remark that he didn't want his girlfriend bringing any blacks to the, to the uh, basketball game. What's his problem? Doesn't he know that basketball is a black man's sport? Just like hockey's a white man's sport. Oh, there's a black or two in hockey, and there's a white or two in basketball. But basketball is a black man's sport. Why would he say something like that? I'll tell you why. To further the agitation. Do you think this billionaire said this, said this deliberately fomenting, uh, provocate, provocate, provo provocation? Do you think he did this by mistake? 
Listen, they're building right-wing fascism in this country. And when this guy's fined two and a half million dollars, a lot of white men are going to be angry about it because they don't want to see a bunch of blacks at the basketball game either. But it's just designed to further to incite this uh, impending race war, civil war in North America. And I say this guy's a part of it. So white men, don't get suckered by this. Realize he wants to incite you to right-wing fascism. Continuing on. Further, this broadcast calls for the voluntary separation of white Reformation Bible-believing anti-Roman papacy, pro, that is, pro-Julian calendar. You realize there's Orthodox Christians that hold to the Julian calendar. They're called the Old Calendar Orthodox Christians. I have a few friends that hold to that. And these Old Calendar Orthodox Christians, they're going to be allowed in my country of probaptica. Because they have set themselves against the Julian, the Gregorian calendar, which is the creation of the Jesuit Christopher Clavius. The Orthodox churches, when they adopted the, Gregor the, the Gregorian calendar in 1917 or so, that's when they all confederated to Rome. Because in Probaptica, we're not going to be on the damnable Gregorian calendar. We're going to be under the Julian calendar. And run parallel to that, we're going to have our Hebrew calendar. But there's going to be no Gregorian calendar in my country. And therefore, all you Orthodox leaders and Christians that are observing the Gregorian calendar, don't come to Probaptical. You just keep serving the Pope, okay? And watch the decimation of your country. Watch the decimation of Orthodox Ukraine. Watch the decimation of Orthodox Russia that took place during the 20th, 19th and 20th centuries especially during World War II. You want to unite with the Pope of Rome? Just watch the decimation of your country arrive. Look, look, look right now. Down there in the uh, coastal states, down there in Florida and Alabama, Mississippi, they've had, what, 21 inches of rain in 24 hours? Do you think this is just a coincidence? Or do you think the Jesuits using their their minions, their secret society minions have been using their weather technology, call it harp, call it whatever you want, to do this, to flood these areas so that the people will be forced to move, which will further facilitate an easier invasion of a Sino-Soviet Muslim host when the Chinese come through the new canal they're building through Nicaragua and also in Panama, they bring their carriers through, and they can came, come right into the Gulf of Mexico there and land on the shores that have been deliberately purged of any inhabitants between uh, uh, dumping the Corexit on the Gulf of Mexico, uh, making the oil 50 times more toxic so that the people, uh, the, only, the only option they have to do is to move. That's securing a, uh, a secure beachhead. And that's what they're doing now. They're just, it's continual, and God is ultimately responsible for it because, you see, the American white man has determined not to read the Bible, not to truly believe the gospel, not to repent of his sins, not to serve God, not to be thankful. And so God is giving us up, and we are seeing national judgment continually unfold against us. I don't like that. God would do that. God does it all the time. He's done it for the last 2,000 years. He raises up one group of people and puts them down 100, 200 years later. He raises up the British Empire. He destroyed it in the 20th century. He raised up uh, America, and now he's destroying it in the 21st century. Listen, God is not beholden to any man. He does whatsoever seemeth good to himself in the earth, and we need to get a hold of God. We need to start understanding him. Otherwise, we're not going to be alive much longer. We might not have something to eat next week. Or we might be swimming in the front yard trying to keep from drowning. Listen, God is serious about calling men to repentance and believe in the gospel. And he's serious about punishing sin. And he's serious about punishing national sin. God does not wink at national sin. He takes it all in. And when the fullness of iniquity comes to a nation, then he must judge it. What did he say to Abraham about the land of Canaan? He says when the 
iniquity of the Amorites has come to the full. I will judge that land. So it is here. So it's coming here. And what are you going to do, sir, my white brother? Indeed, we intend to set up a new nation out of um, Pennsylvania that's declared its independence, and that new nation called Probaptical, to the exclusion of all other races except the racial Hebrew Jewish Israelites. Being AV 1611, Bible believing, gun owning, white Caucasian nationalists, we desire to enjoy God's blessing of Genesis 12, 1 through 3, as we bless Abraham's physical seed through Jacob, which racial descendants may voluntarily live among us while preserving their own Hebrew race, defined in the scripture of truth as quote unquote the holy seed and quote unquote the holy people. The Jews, racially speaking, have been defined in the scripture of truth as the holy seed. But does that mean they're holy and they do it? No, it doesn't. It means as far as God's concerned, he has chosen this specific race of people unto himself, separated it unto himself, and therefore it is called holy. Holy means separated for the use of God. And presently, national Israel is under judgment and has been under judgment since no later than 70, A.D. 70, with the destruction of Jerusalem. And they're wandering in all the nations, pursuant to Deuteronomy 28. And while they're being temporarily set aside nationally, even though there are individual Jews that are saved, they're elect according to Romans 9, and they're in Christ, but nationally, Israel's set aside till the fullness of the Gentiles comes in, and therefore we Gentiles, especially us white Gentiles, we owe them a debt of gratitude and that God has extended his grace to us while temporarily setting aside his holy seed. His holy people. We'll be back after station identification here 24 7 World Raider with men and brethren. What shall we do? This is 24 7 World Radio. This is Richard Bagan, host of the Gospel in France broadcast on 24 7 World Radio. Ici Richard Bégin. Votre animateur pour l'émission Évangile en français sur les ondes de 24 sur 7 World Radio. I teach the French speaking people of the world the gospel of Jesus Christ and I defend the French Calvinists against the Jesuits. J'enseignerai aux francophones du monde l'évangile de Jésus Christ et la défense des Calvinistes français contre les Jésuites. Join me for an entire French broadcast every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on 247worldradio.com. Soyez avec nous pour cette émission entièrement francophone à tous les mercredis à 2h p.m. Heure de l'Est, ici même, sur 24 sur 7, worldradio.com. This is Fernando Castaneda, host of Christianity Today on 24-7 World Radio. Each Tuesday and Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, I present the spiritual condition of the church today, comparing how the church should be according to the A.D. 1611 Reformation Bible. And ladies, join my wife, Kendra, during the second half of each show for teaching specifically for you, pursuant to Titus chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. So join us for Christianity Today every Tuesday and Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on 247worldradio.com. This is Brother Nicholas. Join me every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the German Bible Truth Hour and at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Dutch Bible Truth Hour on 24-7 World Radio. This is Brother Nicholas. Ich lade euch herzlich ein, mich anzuhören jeder Dienstag am 2 Uhr nachmittags amerikanische Zeit für die deutsche Bibelwahrheitsstunde und drei Uhr amerikanische Standardzeit für die niederländische Bibelwahrheitsstunde am World Radio 24-7. Dit is Bruder Nico. Ik ben hartelijk uitgenodigd om elke dinsdag om twee uur amerikaanse standardtijd het Duitse Bijbelwaarheidsuur te volgen en drie uur Amerikaanse standaardtijd het Nederlandse Bijbelwaarheidsuur te volgen op 24-7 World Radio. You're listening to 24-7 World Radio.
announcement. Well, with our announcement coupled with a little ad lib rant. But you may know my heart on these matters. Because I don't know how you feel, but I, I don't trust anybody that reads everything he has to say. I get enough of that teleprompter trash from these presidents and other people that seemingly are so hamstrung that they can't speak off the cuff so that you can really know who they are. So we must keep them uh, uh, cut up and cut in and, and bordered with our little teleprompters and they're going to say what we tell them to say so they can be good little public speakers and they can make it seem to be really them talking. But they're liars, they're actors, they're deceivers, and you don't know. By virtue of his speeches, you don't know who Barry Davis Obama really is. Or John Kerry or these other sinners, for that matter. All these sinners busy serving the Pope. But continuing on. We then seek to arrive at the Pope's political control over blessed Jerusalem, quote unquote, the city of the great king, as the psalmist David said. Who is that? The risen Lord Jesus Christ, which includes the removal of the Pope's CFR led Masonic, Sunni Islamic, pro Nazi Arab leaders, as well as his CFR led pro Nazi socialist, communist, Masonic Jewish labor Zionists. Both sides covertly working together in dividing the Lord's land given to Jacob and his physical racial descendants in Genesis 28, verses 12 through 15. For these modern day Freemasonic, quote unquote, Islamic assassins and Roman Catholic Templars, rule Rome's revived, quote, Latin kingdom of Jerusalem, namely Israel, for the benefit of the Jesuit white pope, which is Antichrist Francis I, overseen by the Jesuit black pope Adolfo Nicholas, advised by the former Jesuit superior general Peter Hans Kovenbach, and to the obvious detriment of the Hebrews living therein. Listen, the Jews do not benefit from the government they have there. All you, all you Zionist attackers, I mean, what's wrong with you? Don't you realize that labor Zionism is a work of the Jesuits out of England through Fabian socialism? Have you ever read Rose L. Martin's work, Fabian Freeway? You need to get it and you need to read it. You need to see that, that, that Fabian socialism is the font for all the other socialism that proceeded out of Great Britain during the late 1800s and early 1900s and, and ultimately today. The Fabian socialists, they're named after the great Roman general Fabius, who took two steps forward and one step back. And so that's how these socialists deal today with people in countries. That's what they've done here in America, two steps forward and one step back, two steps forward and one step back. All this comes from the Jesuits controlling Great Britain for the last, since the days of King George III, and it's out of Great Britain that comes labor Zionism. aided and abetted by the French, working in conjunction with the Jesuits running Great Britain, because the Jesuits run, run France too. Who do you think was behind the Dreyfus Affair? And you white men, you need to know these things. You need to, if you don't know about the Dreyfus Affair, you better check it out. The Dreyfus Affair is the foundation for labor Zionism. Without the Dreyfus Affair accusing Alfred Dreyfus, Captain Alfred Dreyfus of treason, that he gave certain military secrets to the Germans, without, and this happened in France, without this trial, this horrible, terrible trial, falsely accusing a racial Jew of treason, that later was proven Esterhazy was the one really behind it, that Jesuit coadjutor. Without this, you do not have Theodore Herzl in the, in the courtroom then calling for the Jews, they need their own homeland. And Theodore Herzl, remember, he has an audience with the Pope in about 1904. So the Pope can bless his efforts of founding a national homeland for the Jews for the benefit of the Pope of Rome. Theodore Herzl was a conspirator. And any Jew who really wanted his own country was terminated or put out of the way. Like Vladimir, um, uh, the lone wolf, uh, uh, Vladimir Jabotinsky. They killed him in Hunter, New York. Any Jew that really wanted his own nation to be governed for the benefit of his own people was uh, disenfranchised, removed out of the way. 
and so it is today. The government in Israel is working for the Pope. The Masonic Jewish labor Zionists work for the Pope. They do what the Pope of Rome tells them to do. Ariel, uh, uh, Ariel Sharon, Shimon Perez, Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, Golda Meir of the past, David Ben Gurion, uh, all of them, Chaim Wiseman, all those wicked sinners are busy, were busy, and today are busy serving the Pope of Rome. And they couldn't care less about the, the continual uh, uh, pro progress of the Jews living in Israel. And that's why this government in Washington, D.C., gives millions of dollars every year to the government of Israel. Why? Because it's controlled by the Pope. Those Jesuits running the American Congress and getting credit from the post-Federal Reserve Bank, they wouldn't give one penny to the government of Israel if it wasn't working for the Pope. It's the same way with the Arab governments. This government in this country has given three times the amount to Arab governments that it has to Israel. And why? Because these Arab leaders are busy working for the Pope too. They're financing the leaders of the Arabs and the Jews at the expense of the American people because we're just their cooties. We're just their step and fetch it. We're just their boas to, to, to pay for this new world order that they want to establish. And when they're done with us, they're going to terminate us. Continuing on. Lastly, this broadcast will seek to expose the universal power of Satan's anti-reformation Bible, counter-reformation, pro-cartel capitalist, pro-socialist communist, pro-socialist fascist, military company of Jesus, being in fact the revived Knights Templars, true to the devil's military and commercial. The De Jesuits are the masters of commerce and war. The devil's military and commercial company of the slain Osiris, risen to be the invincible Horus of Egyptian Freemasonic mystery religion, the actual destiny of the final Pope of Rome, to be slain and rise from the dead, then to be the invincible Antichrist, the beast, that man-beast, to rule all nations for 42 months as, quote-unquote, the king of Babylon. This is, the, this is the mystery of iniquity through the ancient mystery religions founded after the global flood based upon idolatry and based upon a coming world savior that would be the agent for the devil. And the Jesuits are the masters of, of this ancient pagan Babylonian religion. The Jesuit general is the Darth Vader and the evil emperor is the pope. There's a whole lot of truth in those Star Wars movies. Continuing. For the order's demon-possessed, Father General, the God of his surname, quote, Company of the Perfect, now rules every government on earth via the white post, quote, Sovereign State of Vatican City and its papal knighthoods, on the advice of his secret ten-man Jesuit council, representing Rome's ten most powerful papal bloodline families, as well as being advised by his ten Jesuit assistants, they controlling high-level, Illuminati, Satan-worshipping, Scottish Rite Freemasons, ruling the craft worldwide. Who are these families? Families like the Orsinis. Pepe Orsini. Isn't that right, Peppy? You wicked sinner. And the Borgias. And the Colonas. And the Aldobrandinis. And the Contis. And even the Breakspears. All these wicked, horrible, terrible, ungodly, filthy heads of these families busy serving the Pope of Rome. Financing the black Pope and the Pope. And these guys, they do what they're told because they'll be pushing up daisies if they ever want to go against the Jesuit order. Because the Jesuit order runs all the intelligence communities. It runs all the assassinations. It runs all the, all the intelligence communities of the world. In fact, I just talked to a guy in SEAL Team 6. Sent me an email. We talked for about an hour one day. And I told him, I said, uh, you know, first of all, he wanted to know if I was really be high if I was this blood diamond dealer in diamonds. And I explained to him, of course not. Blood diamonds are illegal. Blood diamonds are illegal in Israel. You can't get a blood diamond in Israel. So my wife was a jeweler. She was trained in jewelry school. And on a side little business, she sells some stones every now and then or sizes a ring or does some things like that. So that's all we ever did. But I'm some great, some huge Israeli diamond dealer. What a joke. If I was in that condition, I wouldn't be asking you for your money. I wouldn't be asking you to support this radio station. I would have plenty of money to do it myself. 
So I told him all these things and quite up front with him. When he, he got real up front with me, he said, well, Eric, he said, uh, I was in SEAL Team 6 for many years and uh, we did our work around the world. And I said, uh, of course, what I say, Mr. Uh, Wigan, his name was uh, Mr. Wigan. I said, all these intelligence communities work together. He said, oh, yeah, you're right. He said, because our SEAL Team 6, he worked with SIS. We work with the British SIS. He said, we also work with Mossad. He said, we also work training Spetsnaz, the Russian elite fighting force. He said, well, then you know that all the intelligence communities work together. That's right. And he had a whole bunch of stories about that dirty, filthy John McCain and George Herbert Walker Bush. John McCain, the murderer of over 60 American sailors, when he was gunning around with his, with his fighter aircraft and caused fires and explosions uh, on the aircraft carrier. And so many guys died that his father, who was the admiral at the time, got him off the ship because some sailors would have got together and killed the sinner. That's the good old virtuous John McCain. The good old virtuous John McCain who left his wife who got into an accident and she became crippled. And so he leaves her for, a, for another woman because she's crippled. That's the virtuous John McCain. Mm -hmm. No, the Lord's bringing men to me that are validating everything I've said for the last 10 years, and this is one of them, this Navy SEAL. And I'm going to have him on the broadcast, hopefully, in two weeks. This Friday, I'm going to have uh, uh, Dorothy uh, Mackey again so to show you what's going on with regard to all the abuse, sexual abuse to women in the military. Continuing on, its designs and plots involving the control of world finance, world press, and the world intelligence community will be elucidated with historic irrefutable citations spanning over 300 years. It's important that you know that the Jesuits run all the banks. They run Chase Manhattan Bank, now which is J.P. Morgan Chase. They run Citibank. They definitely run Bank of America. They run Wells Fargo. And by the way, if you don't notice, all these banks and their advertisements give, give preference to blacks. Blacks are always primary in their advertisements. You get a couple of blacks, a mulatto here, maybe a Spanish person there, and then you might get one or two white people here or there. And, of course, a white woman's got to be standing out. Then you might have a white man, maybe. Same way with M&T Bank, owned by Warren Buffett. When I was at M&T Bank a couple of days ago, they got a black face up there, and then you got a Spanish individual, and then you got another black face. And I said, it looks to me like this bank's for black folk. It's all about black supremacy in the second reconstruction put upon us by our conquerors, the conquered us on March 9th, 1933, put us under military government and put us under the second reconstruction and then started their big civil rights movement in the 1930s, all for the benefit of the Pope of Rome and beating down and defeating the white population of this country using the blacks to do it. And then later with the women and their equal rights for women, using the women to do it, particularly the white women. That's the real purpose of all this, folks. Destruction of the Protestant Reformation, which is racially white. You've got to get to the Reformation. You've got to destroy the white folk. Blacks will never bring about a Reformation. Hispanics will never bring about a Reformation. Asians will never bring about a Reformation. They've never done it. It's only these white folk. So we got to get them race mixed, miscegenated, mongrelized, hybridized, black men with white women everywhere, put, produce mulattoes everywhere in a hybrid nation, just like Brazil and South America. They will never stand against a white power structure. Cuba, Cuba used to be white. Now it's what, 85% black and mixed? It'll never stand against a post-white power structure as it's, being, as it's being ruled by a white man, loyal to the Pope of Rome. Continuing on, they run the banks, they run the intelligence community, they run the press. Rupert Murdoch with his Fox News network, Rupert Murdoch, busy kissing the slippered toe of the Pope, the knight of the equestrian order, the knight of Malta, 
the night of St. Gregory. Rupert Murdoch is one of the very most powerful men in the world today in the press. And Sean Hannity and Bill O'Reilly that are looking out for you know it. And Laura Ingram. And who's that other one? Ann Coulter, that blonde-looking whore with those, with those dress cut up to her vaginal cleavage and, and, uh, and trying to seduce you in her very presence so that you'll listen to her propaganda. Listen, all these wicked sinners, these white sinners, busy serving the white power structure. And what do we do and send them in our money? What do we even do and listen to them for? Why do we even buy their books? No. This white power structure is out to destroy white people, white nations, the white Protestant Reformation. And we white men better wake up. All peoples of whatever race or nation will benefit if the biblical principles espoused on this broadcast are applied to themselves in accordance with the Word of God. The AV 1611 Reformation English Bible for English speaking peoples. And now to begin. Well, welcome to the broadcast. Welcome to the broadcast that I trust is the most offensive broadcast in the world. And if I haven't offended you, especially you, my white brothers, I do apologize. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on it a whole lot harder after this next announcement so that I might, it's my purpose to make you angry, to make you mad. And then as I preach the gospel, to make you sad, bring you to repentance by the grace of God. And then ultimately to bring you to salvation, to make you glad, mad, mad, sad, and glad in that order. And that's the purpose of the preacher. Is to wake you up, is to make you uncomfortable, so that you reassess what you are, what you've done, to the end that you might truly repent of your sins and believe the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for your sins according to the scripture, that he was buried, and that he rose again according to the scripture. And he calls all men everywhere to repent, to turn from your wicked way, and truly believe this wonderful good news while there's still time because the night is coming when no man worketh. We'll be back in a moment for station identification here at 24-7 World Radio. This is 24-7 World Radio. This is Brother Nicholas. Join me every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the German Bible Truth Hour and at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Dutch Bible Truth Hour on 24-7 World Radio. This is Bruder Nicolas. Ich lade euch herzlich ein, mich anzuhören, jeder Dienstag am 2 Uhr nachmittags, amerikanische Zeit, für die deutsche Bibelwahrheitsstunde und 3 Uhr amerikanische Standardzeit für die niederländische Bibelwahrheitsstunde am World Radio 24-7. Dit is Bruder Nico. U bent hartelijk uitgenodigd om elke dinsdag om 2 uur Amerikaanse standardtijd het Duitse Bijbelwaarheidsuur te volgen en 3 uur Amerikaanse standardtijd het Nederlandse Bijbelwaarheidsuur te volgen op 24-7 World Radio. This is Fernando Castaneda, host of Christianity Today on 24-7 World Radio. Each Tuesday and Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, I present the spiritual condition of the church today, comparing how the church should be according to the A.D. 1611 Reformation Bible. And ladies, join my wife, Candra, during the second half of each show for teaching specifically for you, pursuant to Titus chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. So join us for Christianity Today every Tuesday and Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on 247worldradio.com. This is Richard Began, host of the Gospel in French broadcast on 24-7 World Radio. Ici Richard Begin, votre animateur pour l'émission Évangile en français sur les ondes de 24 sur 7 World Radio. I teach the French-speaking people of the world the gospel of Jesus Christ, and I defend the French Calvinists against the Jesuits. J'enseignerai aux francophones du monde l'évangile de Jésus-Christ et la défense des Calvinistes français contre les Jésuites. Join me for an entire French broadcast every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on 247worldradio.com. Soyez avec nous 
pour cette émission entièrement francophone à tous les mercredis à 2 h p.m. Heure de l'Est, ici même, sur 24 sur 7, worldradio.com. You're listening to 24-7 World Radio. In our first hour. And now that I have finished the announcement with a few comments, it's my desire to, to tell you about the Jesuits and their vision. You see, without a vision, the people perish. The Jesuits have vision. They have dreams. They have goals. They're not just existing. They get up every morning, generally at 5.30 in the morning. And if they're novices or scholastics or wherever they are in their education, they're up at 5.30 every morning. They're not sleeping in. The Jesuits are not lazy. It's a military order. When I was in the Air Force, we got up 5.30 every morning. Remember, the TI used to come in, get up, get out of my house. And we better get up, and we better get up right now. We better get up, start moving. And if one, <laughs> I remember one guy, <laughs> he stayed there laying in his bed. And the, uh, the drill sergeant went over there, went over to him and said, get up, boy. And he was, he was a big Texas Southerner. And he took the, the mattress and just overturned it on him and threw him on the floor with the bed. <laughs> And, you know, I, I found it highly comical. Because I knew if I did that, I'd get the same thing. A military order instills discipline. And when you're told something to do, you do it. And when it's time to get up, you get up. When there's no sleeping in. The Jesuits have vision. They have discipline. And they, whatever they're doing, they give their whole mind to it. There's no shadow of turning in their purpose. And to maintain them in their purposes, they have their religious retreat every year called the Spiritual Exercises of, of St. Ignatius Loyola, or pardon me, St. Ignatius Leola, Loyola. And there they spend 30 days in retreat often in silence, not speaking, in meditation, reviewing their purpose as Jesuits. Because they have a dream. I have a dream, says the Jesuit general, when all nations will submit to the Pope of Rome, the Pope of Rome of our making. That's right. That's the dream of the Jesuit order. To submit all nations to the power, the political power of the Pope of Rome. Now, you white Roman Catholics need to wake up. And you need to stop being so defensive when I tell you these things. You're anti-Catholic! I'm anti-treason! And if your religion calls for treason, then I'm anti-Catholic. as is any Bible believer, as is any nationalist should be. It's one, man to, it's one thing to have a religion, as long as your religion doesn't advocate the death or persecution of somebody else of some other religion, and you're the leader of your religion doesn't think he has the right to rule your country. I mean, if, uh, that's one thing. And by the way, the only religions are that are Protestants and Baptists and Jews, and not the Talmudic religion, by the way, just... Straight racial Jews, they don't want to run your country. So the just Jews can be allowed in my country. But any religion that's intolerant, that calls for persecution of another religion, is not allowed in my country and shouldn't be allowed in any other country. What do you think is going on in the Ukraine right now? It's all out of religion. Jesuit control religion. And that will never be reported. 
When was it reported to you that Eastern Ukraine is Orthodox and Western Ukraine is Roman Catholic? When was that ever reported to you here in this country? Don't you think it has something to do with the religion of those people? So the Jesuits have vision. That's their main vision. That all nations, the government of all nations would submit to the Pope of Rome. So the question is, how have they sought to bring this about? Well, for the last 200 years, they have used the British Empire. The British Empire really ended in the 1970s when they lost their last, last colony in Africa. They used the British Empire since King George III. And they used the American Empire since FDR. And by using the militaries of these empires, they've used the militaries to subjugate specific peoples and then give them political leaders loyal to the Pope. That's all it's about. That's all politics 101 is about. Using the empires that the Jesuits have controlled and brought to high financial and military power, and then to use the military and the political diplomacy, as well as the jackals and, and the wet boys, anybody else they want to use, to reduce that country to serving the Pope of Rome by the leaders that these empires put in power. And so on March 9th, 1933, the Jesuits took this country. They took all the land. They took all the labor. They took all the businesses. The treasurer, became, treasurer again became the alien property custodian for all the land in the country. And the attorney general has his hand in it, too. Between the attorney general and the secretary of the treasury, they're the alien property custodian, and they control all the land, labor, and business in this country. And what to what end? To use it to further the temporal power of the pope diplomatically, financially, and militarily. And so this is what the Jesuits have accomplished. The 20th century was the Jesuit century. As I, that Jesuit coadjutor at Night of Malta, Al Pacino said in the movie, The Devil's Advocate, who can deny that the 20th century was all mine, all of it? And of course it was. The Protestant churches and the Baptist churches had departed from the Reformation Bible, the AV 1611 Reformation Bible that God has blessed as a matter of history. They went to the government and said, please, Mr. Government, please, Mr. IRS, would you give us a, an exemption? Okay, religious organization. You're not a church. You're a religious organization. If you were a church pursuant to 508C1A, uh, we wouldn't be doing that, give you any exemption. You don't need it. But if you're a religious organization, we'll give you an exemption, and you boys, you step and fetches, can give us a tax return every year. That's right. And so we can report it to the Pope because all the financial records of the treasury are absolutely reviewable by the Jesuits in the Vatican. And if you don't believe the connection of the Jesuits between the IRS and the Vatican, just listen to Karen Hooties. She'll tell you, an attorney for the World Bank and a Jewess. The Jesuits have vision. That's why they have 28 universities in this country where they can teach the cream of the crop, the cream of the crop of America, to be lawyers and doctors, to be lawyers to continue their emergency war powers government and courts, to be doctors to continue the holy office of the Inquisition against white Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, and Baptist Western civilization, so we can continue our cancer Inquisition against these people. So, American people will die, will die of one of three things. They're going to die of cancer, heart disease, quote-unquote, or diabetes. And the fourth thing they're going to die of is iatrophic-induced diseases, which means the doctors caused them. The doctors, the allopathic doctors, with monopoly, the monopoly in medicine today. So we have our students, so we will continue having manned our holy office of the medical inquisition, 
We have our law students that will sit as judges ultimately and maintain the emergency war powers uh, martial process in all of our courts and fly the gold fringe flags. We're going to have all these students. Uh, we're going to have them go off into um, oh, politics so they can control the Republican and the Democratic Party and the other parties, you know, whatever they might be going to. So they can control the Tea Party nation. That's right. It's a nation. So they can control that. So they can control Ross Perot and his little party designed to ensure the election of what, Billy Boy Clinton? I mean, the Jesuits run all these things. And their military fortresses called universities are places where they plot and plan all of this, and then they bring it to fruition. They write certain pieces of legislation, like the Patriot Act, written by Viet Din, a Vietnamese Roman Catholic professor at Jesuit Georgetown, and Michael Chertoff, that Jewish knight of Malta, a federal district judge, or a federal judge, I think he was in the Court of Appeals, uh, busy working for the Jesuits. They have vision. And you know what? They spend their time and their money to fulfill it. They control the actors in Hollywood. They control Sylvester Stallone. He's a knight of Malta. They control uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, the former governor of California, and the Terminator. He's a knight of Malta. They control uh, Robert De Niro, and what Robert De Niro, he's a knight of Malta. And all the wicked things he's portrayed in, that wicked sinner. The Jesuits control the black Denzel Washington. That's right. That's why Brother Denzel gave two and a half million to the Jesuits at Fort and to his old alma mater, his, his holy mother of God there, the alma mater, Fort. The Jesuits educate the people or bring to power the people that are actors and major actors in Hollywood, just like that other one. Um, oh, uh, what's his name? He's that older gentleman, Anthony, Anthony Hopkins. He's another Knight of Malta. Jesuits run him. That's why he plays a Jesuit in the movie called what uh, has to do with uh, him casting out devils called The Right. The Jesuits run Hollywood. And they use certain court Jews to be up front. The Jesuits run the, pre <coughs> run the Secretary of Treasury. And they use certain court Jews up front. Like the Jewish today, Miss Heller, following Ben Bernanke, both of them Jews. So they can blame the Jews for what they do in the destruction of this people. The Jesuits have major men in the military. The one who runs the American military, the Secretary of Defense, Leon Panetta, is a Knight of Malta, beloved of the Jesuits of Santa Clara University. They spend their money, their time, their effort to create their, their little emissaries to man the places of the empire that they want them. They have vision. And here's some of their vision. And I'm reading to you from a devil call, from a book called The Devil, The Devil's The Devil in Robes or The Sin of Priests. And this was written about 1900. And here is what a part of the Jesuit oath. He says, And that by virtue of the keys, the binding and loosen, giving to his holiness by my Savior, Jesus Christ. By the way, the silver key that the eagle clutches, which is the symbol of the NSA, symbolizes the Pope's power of binding and loosing, which tells you that the NSA is run by the Jesuits and their Knights of Malta or high-level Masons. Louis Tordello was one of them. He was a vice deputy of the NSA for 15 years. Came out of Loyola University out of Chicago. NSA, Robert Snowden and you other guys, you're busy working for the Jesuits, enforcing his temporal power, binding and loosing. He says... And by virtue of the keys of binding and loosing given to his holiness by my Savior, Jesus Christ, the Jesus Christ of Romanism and not the Jesus Christ of the Bible, he hath power to depose heretical kings, princes, states, commonwealths and governments, all being illegal without his sacred confirmation, and they may be safely destroyed. That's the, one, that's the fourth vow in the Jesuit oath. They have taken a vow 
to destroy every heretical government born out of the Protestant Reformation on the face of the earth. And they will overthrow any king or any military dictator who doesn't do the bidding of his Jesuit advisors. And they do it. He goes on and he says, I will defend, therefore, to the utmost of my power, I will defend this doctrine and his holiness is right and custom against all usurpers of the heretical or Protestant authority whatsoever, especially the Lutheran Church of Germany, Holland, Denmark, Sweden, and Norway, and now the pretended authority and churches of England and Scotland, and the branches of the same now established in Ireland, and on the continent of America and elsewhere, and all adherents in regard that they be usurped and heretical opposing the sacred mother church of Rome. I do denounce and disown any allegiance as due to any heretical king, prince, or state, named Protestant or liberals, or obedience to any of their laws, magistrates, or officers. I do further declare that the doctrine of the churches of England and Scotland of the Calvinists, Huguenots, French Huguenots, and others of the name of Protestants or liberals to be damnable, and they themselves to be damned, who will not forsake the same. This is the Jesuit vision. Are you getting the picture yet? Are you getting it yet, Alex Jones? I know you do. It's time for you to repent, sir. We'll be back in a moment after meditation and prayer. Listening to 24 7 World Radio. From Feature Story News in London, I'm